All right, guys, it's the morning after Danny shot his mature Kentucky buck, but we know there's still another giant out there. So we're heading out there uh, to go set up in uh, the same area, but different tree. We're gonna get up there together, see if we can get that big one. If I didn't film this, my wife would not be happy with me. You beat the horn? Hear it! Ah! Feels like they don't see me. That's funny. So we're switching it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to be camera guy now. And uh, we're going to be going into this little uh, area that I kept seeing the deers cross through. Um, we're going to get a little bit closer than... I was yesterday into the action um, primarily because we want to uh, both sit on the same tree and the trees that are out in the open don't really give us much of an opportunity to do that. And Mark over here getting all set up. What we did was um, we brought a change of clothes and then we got to a, a, you know, a point where we could start going real slow and we changed our clothes, sprayed down with uh, scent killer to try to be as stealthy as possible really don't want to bump this big buck out of here so we'll see how it goes hopefully uh hopefully we get some footage here pretty soon or an opportunity or something
Alright, so. I didn't get a buck. I don't know if it's because you shot a buck there. Uh, oh. Or if it's because of the way the wind was blowing. Or just a combination of both, but. Uh, yeah, I think it was a combo. I mean, we saw deer. Yeah. You know, we saw, uh, like, what, four deer? And that doe blew us from 100, yeah, miles, like, 100 yards away. A doe came through with a fawn and blew us, like, started blowing at, like, six, I think she was, like, 65 yards away. And there was hardly any wind, so it was, like, really surprising to me that she caught us from that far away. But I guess because we were sitting kind of on this, like, gradual slope, I think the thermals were just pulling our wind, like, right into that bottom that looked like a bedding area. And, you know, it all makes sense now. Like, that's why they're bedding there, because it's just a great place to set up because the, the you know, the afternoon when they're moving out of there, they know it's safe because there's, you know, wind coming in so they can smell everything. You know, when you're sitting on that field, I think that's like the one weak link in, in their course, you know? Mm -hmm. And you just happen to get on that field. It worked out perfectly. But... And needless to say, our scent is all over that place. I don't see a mature buck going through it. So, now we need to figure out what we're going to do for the last day of hunting tomorrow. My last chance to get a buck. We were talking to a guy in the parking lot. Take a short walk. He told us of a spot that, uh, he, he told us that if... If we uh, don't kill a big buck, he's going to kiss our butt. And he was serious. <laughs> and so, he didn't look like the kind of person that likes kiss, kissing butts, so. Yeah, so we're, we're checking out. Yeah, we're going to check that out. He said he hunted there one time. And uh, do you remember the guy's name? I'm the worst name. Yeah, me too. Sorry, Pete, dude, Pete? if if you checked. I don't, don't think it was Pete. No, Keith. Keith? Keith? Oh, maybe. Well, whatever your name was, dude, we appreciate the uh, the intel. So we, this guy was saying that he um, went to this spot because he had a uh, like a doe tag, like a gun doe tag at the end of the season to like kill as many does as you can because uh, Kentucky has a bit of a doe problem. And uh, he went and sat at this spot and just giant buck after giant buck came walking by and he didn't see one doe. So, you know, probably the way it's going to go if we go there, we're going to see every doe in Kentucky <laughs> and no bucks, but... It's worth, it's worth uh, checking it out. And a word of advice, always buy fried chicken before you go hunt. Because you always come out a winner. Alright guys. Danny's sitting right back there. We're set up on this little field right here. This is the spot that the guy told us he saw a bunch of big bucks last season. We haven't seen anything move yet. It's like 7.15, so it's only the first half hour of daylight, but there's a lot of trails, like game trails going through this field, so it's probably used quite a bit. It actually looks a lot like the field that Danny shot his big buck in, so I'm going to hang out here for a little bit longer. I don't want to stay too long. All righty. So we uh, we went out to this spot that. Um, What's his face? I can't remember his name. Sorry, dude. Uh, told us to uh, go sit on. We did not shoot a giant buck, so you're going to have to come find us and kiss our asses. Um, but we did find an area that gives us the tingles. It's our Hail Mary. It's our last chance, so pretty much... Uh, I don't want to say if it's brown, it's down, but... It's got, down. <laughs> if, it, if it's got antlers, i uh, probably shoot it, unless it's like a spike. But even that, I might shoot a spike at this point just because 
It's meat in the freezer and it's probably still going to be in velvet, so a velvet spike is cooler than a hard horn spike. <laughs> or a velvet spike is cooler than a tag suit. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. So before we head out to this new spot uh, where we're going to do our last sit of the trip. We're going to get sweaty. Yeah, we're going to go get sweaty. <laughs> now we're uh, we're going to head over to this other spot where... Every doe in Kentucky lives there. And then they yeah. just go to other places. There's right. so many does in this spot, it's stupid. They get on a bus and they ship them out. We're going to go make a move on Goofy. And um, basically the wind is actually pushing just right so that I can sneak into position on one of the main trails that he seems to use. And Danny's going to get on the other side where we think he's bedded just kind of slowly work his way in and hopefully bump him out right to me and then I'll shoot him. Hashtag wind bump. Well. Bumper wind bump, bro. By the time I get there, I'm going to be nice and smelly. Wind bump requires the wind to be blowing at him. It's not going to be blowing at him. It will by the time I cross him. Yeah, maybe. It might be a wind bump. It might just be a sound bump, you know? Either way, we're going to bump him. I'm and I'm gonna try and shoot at him, and and if it works, I might shoot him and he'll jump off the cliff right into the back of the car, right so, onto the roof of the truck, the yeah. thing. And then we don't have to pay. Oh, well, then you don't get insurance when you die. Chris, cool. <laughs> got that covered. So anyway, that's the plan. make my way in through this field behind me and uh, try to make a move on this buck that's better out here. We're trying to wind bump him towards Mark so Mark can get an opportunity and see if this works out. Um, there's a lot of briars and crap in this field. So we try to move slow, but fast enough to cover some ground. There's deer beds all up in here. Shows up very well, but one there, another one there. Oh, and briars, lots of briars. I just got a text from Mark. Apparently he just shot the buck. Um, looks like he was better on the ridge. So I'm gonna go meet with him and see see what happened. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he placed a good shot.
tree that's down? Yeah, the tree that's laying down. Yeah, the wind is blowing straight there from where I am right now. So I came walking, I heard a crunch, and I looked down, and I see him get up, and I just saw antlers. He jumped out, and I thought he was gone. I thought he went down the ridge. But I just, I remember just like turning on every camera I had. I was just like, boop, boop, boop. And I just started running down here in case he was going to come up, you know, this spot. I don't know how far I got before, like, I saw him again, because I just saw him scaling up, you know, I, I then saw him scaling up, like, this ridge right here. So, I stopped and got ready to shoot, and he posted up right at the top of the ridge for a second. You know, he was, he was about to dart, and he stopped for a second. And I tried to guess the distance, and I guessed he was 40 yards, and I saw the arrow. It went, like, like, it looked like it. I bet if we go to the hit side, there's probably hair. I think you just strap? skim the back strap, yeah. So there's just like me. But there's a good blood on that leaf. I know he went that way. I figure if there's like a good blood trail, we got the wind blowing this way. Like if there's a lot of blood, we might be able to get a second shot. You want to watch the video? I have my laptop. on. <clears throat> it's, he's alive, like 100%, and he will survive this. So he's probably going to go lay down because he's hurt. So if, you know, our best chance is to get after him, I think. Just see if we can follow some sort of blood trail. And then if I hear him, I'll take another shot. I mean, how, you think it went under or above the spine? Above. If it went under, he's dead. Yeah, there's a lot of hair on there. Yeah, and it's the dark hair from the back. I feel like I made the right call though, because the shot was like as far as the length of the body was like the right place. So if it hit, you know, if it was the right height, it mm -hmm. would have killed him. And if it wasn't, you know, he's still gonna survive. Unfortunately, it was not. All right, so we reviewed the video, and it looks like it could Mark's possibly a sharpshooter. It could possibly be a uh, good shot. Um, we're not entirely sure, but it's definitely worth looking to see if we can find this deer. Um, it's a so, really blurry video, being that it's like probably 35, 40 yards with a GoPro. So the but image isn't great. So we'll see. The deer definitely mule kicks. He kicked, and, and it looks like it's more center mass than Mark thought initially. Yeah, and um, it actually, um, the arrow was laying on the ground. Like, it didn't blow through and stick into a tree like I was expecting. It was just kind of laying there. So, it, it was slowed down significantly, which means it had to have blown through something solid. Here comes the car. So, our theory right now is that it went through both shoulder blades, perhaps. Um, and therefore it will get lungs. And the reason we didn't find blood is because it, uh, uh, it might've been slightly high. So all the blood would be pulled up inside. That's the theory. So we're going to go see if we can find him or some evidence that he's there. So we uh, searched and searched for blood, um, couldn't find any. We grid searched for a little while. We 
went to where we thought the deer went to and just didn't find any evidence and well anyway it, the whole time we were walking through there it's it's like all briars 99.9% yeah. .9 of it is briars so uh, we got pretty cut up and stuff uh, unfortunately we couldn't find any more blood and we decided to, to call it um, I honestly think the deer's alive though I think uh, I think I just got like backstrap um, I think the video plays tricks on your mind because uh, you can't see the can't see the light anymore after it gets a certain distance away um so i don't know but uh you guys saw the video let us know in the comments what you think if you think it was a good hit or not um either way we're uh making one last play to uh potentially uh get a buck for me so heading out to the spot we uh showed you guys earlier so uh, we're gonna sit there for the evening sit probably only gonna get like you know a three three or four hour sit and uh hopefully something comes out you know you never know what's gonna come out when you go to a new spot so it's kind of exciting all right guys we're in kentucky and this was the last sit so <laughs> somebody's gonna come looking for us i know Somebody at the parking lot's like, oh my god, somebody's getting attacked by a bear. But there's no bears here. Um, anyway, uh, you know, this trip has been awesome. And yeah, we didn't see anything on this particular sit. Uh, somebody told us there was a ton of bucks out here. Um, uh, I don't remember his name. That's what you get for taking people's word for it and uh, not doing your own scouting and stuff. We just kind of went in here just to change it up and uh it did not pay off in this case but that's okay we both harvested some this trip danny slammed a huge buck uh i got a biggest biggest doe i've ever seen yeah she was so yeah. uh you know i consider this a major success and if you haven't watched uh all of the kentucky videos yet make sure you uh go check those out and uh we got a bunch of other hunts coming up uh, we're heading back to florida tomorrow so Potentially next weekend, I'll be in uh, Zone C for the opener. Um, we got a whole bunch of other quota hunts and stuff coming up. So, uh, yeah, make sure you're uh, subscribed. Hit the bell so you get notifications. Drop us some comments. Hit that like button and uh, tell your friends about us. Also, check out the Patreon page at uh, www.patreon.com forward slash swap and stomp. And uh, check out this video right up here for our current giveaway. All right, guys, thanks for checking out this uh, out-of-state video series, and uh, stay tuned for our other videos, and uh, see you in the woods. Swamp and stop.